Hey, welcome back to another episode of The Journey. I'm Marie Loff, and today we're joined by Lynn Chen. Hi, Lynn. Hi. So you're a vocalist, and you have started Freedom Heart. Yeah, so I'm a singer-songwriter. There are a lot of um, personal kind of struggles in life we all have. <laughs> so I named myself Freedom Heart because um, it's my goal, it's my drive to see people be freed from personal um, struggles and challenges and through my music, that's what I write a lot about. And personally, I've gone through depression and anxiety. And so a lot of that is reflected in my songs, so. (laughs) How did you get into music? That is a good question. Man, it's been a long journey for me. I'm sure that's what a lot of artists say. I knew in high school that my passion, and I started um, singing at church. People would say, oh, you're so talented. I think you should record an album. And so I already had like these outside people telling me that, you know, they believed in me, but I never really believed in myself. So I kind of, thought, well, it's a good thought and everything, but I'm not quite so sure how that's all going to work out. So (laughs) uh, I went to film school and then um, worked in Hollywood for a season and I felt like it wasn't for me over there. Then my parents were like, what do you want to do now? And I think you should go back to school. So I went back to get my master's in counseling. Um, But all the while I kind of knew in my heart Someone once asked me, like, if you could do something with your life and you didn't have to worry about money, you didn't have to worry about people, what would you do? And don't even think about it. I just want your first answer right off um, off your head. And I said music right away. And that person was like, and that's what you should do. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, but it's so hard. Like. How do we make it work, you know? So it's definitely been like a journey of really knowing what I wanted and also really standing for myself. Where are you going with it? I think right now I'm developing um, my first, well, I've already written and and, um, recorded, produced an album already a few years ago, but uh, I think at the time, It just wasn't, like, I wasn't even really grounded in myself and I wasn't really grounded in, like, even deciding to go in this route. I kind of just kind of knew I wanted to do it, but I wasn't confident. And so I actually didn't really release my songs. So what I'm doing right now in the studio is I'm writing new songs, but I'm also um, bringing some of my old songs and kind of collaborating that into like my first real like release um, for the whole world kind of to see. And I'll be releasing that probably the end of summer or something. Yeah. When you started singing, was it your pieces that you were singing or were you singing other people's work what were you how did it transition from just doing vocalists to I want to sing what I write I I started singing at church and then so I would sing other people's songs and then after that I always I was always writing like ever since I was a kid I loved creative writing that was a passion of mine I would just like like to write stories and poetry and things like that. So it was always in me, I think. It was funny because I would write stories for my friends. So you know how like kids, they like to draw comics? Like, and then, you know, comics was like, usually like every week or every day you come out with something new. But for me, I would write stories, like short stories, and then make it like 
episodic. So I would <laughs> write these stories for my friends and then pass it to them and <laughs> be like, next week, you know? So it's kind of funny that I used to do that. Um, so um, after, I guess I would say there was always a hunger in me to, to keep writing songs. And I think there was a time when people would say like, okay, so do you want to write songs for that you're going to sing or you want to write songs for other people to sing? And I didn't, wasn't confident enough for me to sing, but I actually knew I had to sing them because they're coming from me and it's very personal and it's kind of like my story. And so I kind of then transitioned into, um, okay, I have to sing these songs because they're from me. Your creative process, what mm -hmm. does that look like? What does that entail? I, I usually write when I'm inspired or have, I usually have a, a topic that I'm, I feel like, wow, I really want to write about that right now. And I do have like a list of topics that I've, you know, like accumulated, like, oh, that'd be great to write a song about this. Um, sometimes I'll have, instead of a topic, I'll have lyrics. So I'll just write down song lyrics. So I like have like a notebook that I go through and I uh, read what I wrote in the past or comes out of my head. And then I'm kind of like, okay, can this be a song? And sometimes I can get very inspired and usually it's at, at night. It's like, I'm supposed to be sleeping, but <laughs> then all of a sudden I'm getting inspired and I like start writing. <laughs> what I like to do is I like to write stuff first. I'll come back to it and then I'll read what I wrote and go, oh, pretty good, or um, maybe not yet. Uh, I'll sit down and I'll look at the lyrics and then I will edit the lyrics and then, uh, and then I'll put music to it. Uh, there's different processes sometimes because, you know, sometimes you have a melody already and then you'll put the lyrics there together afterward. But usually for me, it's the first, it's I'll write the lyrics first and then the melody. How are you navigating and how are you navigating your music through COVID? I would say that the music, my music has been probably the one saving factor of the, all of this. No, probably not the only saving factor, but I, I would say giving me more purpose, giving me more just an outlet to kind of, you know, I feel like when I see you know social media and the news it's very bleak very kind of discouraging and so that kind of gives me more reason to write my songs you know and, and talk about more hope and kind of like the end of the tunnel light at the end of the tunnel kind of thing for people to have something to grasp on i think especially now we are we have so much time and we have all these platforms that we can go to social media and also like streaming services to have access to that it's just so easily um, attainable and so i would say that because it's so easily attainable it's not as attractive so when you oh well do i want to watch netflix tonight or well, not really it's kind of like you know, you get tired of it, you know? I guess in regards to like music, it's something that you want to do all the time. You want to listen and you want to, you know, music brings um, a different feeling and, and it really takes you somewhere. Not not that mu movies or TV shows don't, um, but music, it, it can transcend you outside of like your feelings of um, despair, you know? When quarantine is lifted, what is the first thing you're going to do? Whew. Probably eat a meal with friends. <laughs> anywhere specific or just anywhere at this point is amazing sounding. Some things that I'm craving is like Korean barbecue or <laughs> um, sushi. Those are like on the top of my list. But I'm so tired of cooking. Took three meals a day, right? Yeah, for, the for kids a lot of everybody. people. Yes. <laughs> it's so funny because 
Dennis and I used to argue about going out to eat because he likes to go out to eat and I'm like, no, because I can make it at home cheaper. No, yeah. because I don't want to do with the kids in a restaurant. Mm. No, because I don't want to have to go out. And now I'm like, you're not going to hear the argument from me for a really long time when this is lifted. <laughs> I also miss like getting coffee and tea as well. Oh, I, I, really want I don't consider or myself to be a quote well, <laughs> snob. So we have kind of a tea obsession. Ah. So I have, I have a lot of teas. We have a whole like little coffee bar here and then the coffee addiction for us is like really bad as we start coming out of covid whenever that happens uh, where do you see yourself i would hope that i'll be done with the album i'm working on right now and then i'm going to start touring so preparing for that so yeah so you said you're going to start touring. You want to tell us a little bit about that? Actually, before um, COVID, I was supposed to go on tour to South Africa, but it was actually really crazy because I think it was the week or a few days right before it's, um, Trump started announcing that um, he wasn't going to allow, he was restricting um, people coming back and also restricting restricting people going out as well so I was just like oh man what is going to happen like if I were to go there you know be stranded and I would not be able to come back that would be really crazy so I was just really kind of worried about that and I really prayed about it and was like okay I don't think I should do this it's funny because my friend from South Africa after like a day too said that the South African government canceled all the visas, closed their borders. So it, it wasn't going to happen anyway. If all things go through, I'm supposed to go back on tour to South, South Africa in December. So. Now, as we're going through COVID and even after it, as artists, um, a big part of being an artist is having support, support from our community, from our environment our circles how can people support you probably i i would love more interaction with with people and 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 just to even hear about like how that my music has helped you and i've been getting a lot of amazing feedback about my songs i think it really helps to just hear the positive feedback or even just like kind of way that it helps people um, spur them, you know, in their creative process. I just want to give people the gift of the music because it it's something that it's like a truth that I'm sharing, you know, and if the truth can help you, then that's what really would encourage me. If we're talking about practical support, I would say um, just to follow me on, on social media and just to like, share, and subscribe and that's like a normal thing but as I go forward you know I do kind of wonder how I will be supported with like my tours and things like that but I I just trust that God is going to provide for me and he has and he and, and I had done like fundraisers and stuff I'm pretty good in support for uh, the South Africa tour that's coming you know I will do in the future like a U.S. tour and, and probably other um, countries as well. So I would say financial support, just, just, to, just to reach out and say, hey, you know, uh, this is what I think about your music. And I, I just love any feedback. As we start transitioning to the end of our podcast, what is something that you would want people listening to this? What advice would you want to give them? My advice for people listening to this podcast is that I would say to not let this COVID crisis make you become overwhelmed with anxiety, become overwhelmed with fear. If you can take this time to really reflect on yourself and you know, my heart goes out to you if you've lost your job, 
or if you're going through a really rough time financially, if you can see it in another way, and kind of take it as maybe a second chance or kind of rerouting of maybe you actually wanted to do something different with your life before, you know, before the busyness came in and the distractions of life came in. And, but there's something in your heart that you really want to do, but you're too scared to even admit it out loud. Maybe it's a, a new hobby or maybe it's actually a new um, job trajectory or um, something that you've been uh, wanting to do but haven't been able to pursue. So I would say I've, I've walked that path and even though everything is hard, I haven't been more happier in my life to do what I'm doing now um, as a songwriter and as a singer and musician, artist. Um, life doesn't give us many second chances. And so I would say that maybe this is your second chance. Take this time to really uh, think about that and to say, maybe this is it a new beginning for me. Yeah. I think that's really good advice. And uh, right now, a lot of people are in the perfect position to do that. I wanted to really thank you for coming on to today's show and talking about your experiences, how you got here, and inspiring other people to do the same. If people want to support you, where do they find you? Um, I have uh, everything from Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Um, my name is Freedom Heart LC. It's uh, at Freedom Heart LC. And then um, if you want to su support me financially, I have a Ko-fi account. You can go ahead and go to my website. I have It's um, freedom-heart.com. And you can just even message me on there or even through my social media as well and say, hey, I want to support you. And um, yeah, we'll get that um, sorted out somehow. But yeah, I would love just to hear from you, you know? And um, I love to support artists and just to hear your story. That's what um, I'm about because I love to give back and I love to just to hear your story as an, another artist you know, because we're all kind of going through this journey and kind of want to go through it together. So, yeah. Well, thank you so much for being a part of today's podcast. Thank you. Thank you so much for um, um, asking me to come on. And I had a great time. I had a great time, too. All right. So thanks for tuning in today. And make sure that you check out Lin Chen. Until next time, stay safe. Stay positive and please stay inside. Bye bye. Yeah, it was really bad. Like in the beginning of this, we were running out of coffee. The kids were looking at us like we are going through a national pandemic and you guys are worried about coffee. <laughs> that was like our first priority. We were like, if we don't have coffee, we're both going to turn into zombies. We knew that. And I just looked at her and I was like, understand that your survival depends upon that coffee. Decaffeinated coffee is terrible. <laughs> and I won't drink it. Like, people are like, you can't tell a difference. And I'm like, yes, yes, you can. <laughs>